going to be showcasing how you install Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform on AWS utilizing our IPI method. And this is to show just how quick and easy it can be to spin up a cluster on AWS. The first step would be to go to AWS Management Console and create a root user uh, associated with the appropriate billing information and then setting up an IAM user. And so I'm going to showcase what my IAM user is. If I go to AWS, select the management console, you can go into the IAM service and you can see that I have one IAM user set up. This IAM user needs to have the administrator access policy attached to it, and this is the only policy that it needs to have. The next step would be to go to Route 53 and verify that my domain is set up correctly. You don't necessarily need to have a Route 53 domain, but you do need to properly delegate all of the appropriate namespaces of your third party domain with the AWS information. And so my domain, as you can see, is all set up. The final step before we can go ahead and run the install is to navigate to your .aws directory. And now if you haven't run the AWS installer before, then you won't have this .aws uh, directory. But just to show you where it is, in case you end up misentering your credentials, you can see it's under your home directory. If you cd into .aws. And then if I list out the files in there, I have one file called credentials. This gets created when you run the installer the first time. So that may be the one differentiation between what I'm showing you with the install and what you see if you're running it for the first time. Other than that, the install will be entirely the same. And so we can go ahead and do that. Now the install does take a directory as a, an option, but what I like to do is to run the installer directly from whatever directory I'm in. So as you can see, if I go back to my documents, I have an AWS folder, and then I have an AWS install folder. And so this is going to be where I'm running it. This is empty. There's nothing in it. First step you want to run is OpenShift hyphen install create cluster. First thing it's going to ask you for is if you want to use an SSH key. This is to help uh, set up the correct machines and prepare you for any sort of troubleshooting that you may have, or if the installer fails, then you'll be able to SSH into the appropriate machine. So because I have one set up, I'm going to go ahead and use that. Next step is to select the platform you're going to be installing on. Again, for this, it's AWS. Select the region of the data center that you want. I'm going to select US East 1 because that's the closest data center to me. Because I have already gone through the uh, AWS authentication, which would pop up right here after selecting the region, it's going to already populate my base domain. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that again. As you can see in my root 53, that is the right domain. Then it's going to ask for a cluster name. So for this, I'm just going to do AWS install. And then it's going to ask for the pull secret. Now, the pull secret you can find on try.openshift.com. It'll ask you for your Red Hat credentials, and this is how we manage subscriptions. You can copy it, or you can save it to a file and enter the file. And again, through all of these, you can see there is a type question mark for help. Type question mark for help. It would go ahead and show me some information. Now again, let's paste my pull secret. Once you paste the pull secret, all you have to do is hit enter and it will start with the install. You can see first thing that comes up is it's creating infrastructure resources. So it's going through and setting up the Elastic IP, all of the different infrastructure services that AWS offers. And so now this portion of the install may take about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on uh, a few different factors. So I'm going to go ahead and 
pause the video for now and then we can come back when the is all done. The There's just a few things that I want to go over from the actual output of the installer and that uh, will help you set up your cluster. So the first thing I want to point out is the API URL. This URL can be used to install or to log in to OpenShift on a terminal window using the OC command line tools that we installed earlier. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. So using OC login, you use the cube admin user, as that is what is created at the time of install. The password is also given down here in the last line of the installer. And then when pasting the API URL, you do not need to add any option to the command. So as you can see, we're logged in. If I do the OC, who am I? Cube admin, OC, who am I? Show server. And you can see that's the server that I'm logged into. I will log out of this. A few other things that are given to you when you uh, finish the installer are the system admin cube config command. So what cube config does when you run, if you run this export cube config command here in your local terminal, it will set up the location of the cube config file, which will allow you to log in to your cluster as system administrator. So system admin. And finally, the last thing you're given is the console URL. So this will let you access your OpenShift user interface. So if I copy and paste that, proceed past the certificates because we don't have a certificate set. And then again, log in with cube admin. And as you can see, I'm now logged into the OpenShift user interface. And so really that's, that's it. As you can see, the longest part of the install is waiting for the installer to do the infrastructure setup. Um, and again, once you're done with running your install, if you wanna destroy your cluster, all you have to do is run the OpenShift install destroy cluster command. But one other thing I wanted to discuss is some of the components that are created when you run uh, the installer. So as you can see, you have a couple of Terraform files, you have a metadata file, as well as two folders. These should all be destroyed when you run the OpenShift install destroy cluster command. However, sometimes this file here is not destroyed. So it's generally considered best practice to go in and just verify that everything has been removed. If you ever try to rerun the installer in this same directory, you will get an error when you first run it. And so now I'm just going to go in and destroy the cluster. And so this will take a few minutes and everything will be destroyed from your AWS account. And that is how you install and destroy OpenShift Container Platform on AWS using Red Hat's IPI method. Thanks.